Hello everyone and welcome to Mean Green Game Day. The UNT Mean Green got an amazing win over the FAU Owls 45 to 28 and here to talk about that with me we have Jake Levine, Justin Ballou, Connor Hibbett. I am your host Mark Barrera. Gentlemen how are we doing today? Pretty good. good. It's, it's gonna be hot today though. Yeah. <laughs> Man terrific one. Saturday slate of games. Oh my yeah. true. Nothing Great like, nine, nothing like yeah. 91 degrees in Texas in October. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, let's get right into it. What was the biggest takeaway you had over this win over FAU? Jake, I'm going to start with you. Yeah, so I really think that UNT did a great job just sticking to their bread and butter. The run game was incredible. They had 300 yards rushing. That is awesome to hear. And the O-line really stepped up. They won the time of possession game, which is huge for this team. But they also kind of opened up the playbook. They came up with some new ideas. We saw... Stone Earl gets some action. Mm -hmm. I love that. We had probably at least a half a dozen Wildcat plays. It was really nice to see them get creative, and it definitely worked out. Yeah, when you, when you talk about the game script and how this game played out, this went exactly as UNT wanted it to. I, I wanted to see them play two good halves of football this, this week or last weekend, and they finally did. They went up 28-7 to in that first half, and they never looked back. You mentioned the great run game, 300 uh, rush yards between those three backs and the two quarterbacks that they put in, and a pretty good defensive showing as well with that pick six from Rich Tejada. Mm -hmm. So this one played out exactly as we wanted it to, so let's hope they can continue that today. Even the uh, pass uh, completions that uh, Perry had for FAU, I thought the defensive backs were right on the receivers the whole entire game. I thought they did a tremendous job uh, with uh, really staying with their guy, not l allowing the FAU receivers to get separation because the FAU receivers got a lot of separation against the Purdue defensive backs the previous week, and Purdue's got some pretty good defensive backs. Uh, so I thought UNT's uh, DBs really stepped up. I thought that was the best pass defense for UNT that I've seen in quite some time. Yeah, um, yeah. they held Nikasi Perry to 26 of 50 through the air, and we mentioned you know, on the game day show the speed that that receiving core has for FAU, so really good job from the secondary in that game. Definitely love the secondary. Both KD Davis and Larry Nixon both had 10 tackles. That's the third time that KD has had 10 tackles this year. You know, and we mentioned la uh, two weeks ago how FAU had an amazing run game, and they had no rush or go mm -hmm. over 100 yards. This is an amazing performance by our defense, and they only held them by seven points in the second half. They only gave up seven. So obviously the UNT Mean Green defense is doing something different. What are they doing differently to where it's – they're having so much success is where they didn't early in the season. Just well, yeah, Jake that. mentioned them switching up looks on offense. They sort of did that on defense, too, switching mm -hmm. up the coverages. Um, you mentioned the run defense, 4.7 yards a carry. They really forced FAU with how big of a lead UNT got out to to start throwing the ball. 50 passes for Nikasi Perry. That means that UNT was stopping the run and, and building that lead. So that's what I like to see. Yeah, I was about to say that. They kind of got FAU out of their game, and that, and that was in part due to the offense uh, scoring early and keeping the FAU offense off the field. So they kind of made FAU play catch up. And FAU likes to try to run the ball, play action. I remember they had talked about a couple weeks before they, uh, they played us, they talked about controlling the line of scrimmage and getting the play action game going. We took them out of that game. So we made them play a faster tempo, which we like to play. Mm -hmm. So we made them play our game. And that was the biggest takeaway for me. And I thought the defense did a really good job of communicating. And they seemed to have like a, a second level of aggressiveness, especially in the back end on the defense. The DBs were communicating the whole time. They played up on the receivers. They weren't playing 10 yards off. They were playing the ball really well. They looked back. Uh, we didn't have a whole lot of pass interferences either. And, mm -hmm. that, and that's something, too. We see a lot of DBs who do play aggressive. They typically get some pass interferences. They don't look. They don't play the ball. And, as, and you, you guys know today, if you're a DB and you don't turn your head around and play the ball, you're going to get called for pass interference. And I thought we did a beautiful job of that. So many uh, contested balls for the, the defensive backs. And again, the communication was off the charts. And you see a 28 on the scoreboard for FAU. The defense only gave up 21 points because right. Asinani threw a pick six. And Rich Tejado also got a pick six for UNT. So the defense scored a touchdown. Right. Yep. That was just beautiful to see and exactly how he wanted this game the to defense go. defense got two interceptions. That that's yeah, and that's essentially right. had a second pick six because they returned to like the one yard line. Pretty line. much. Yeah. Should have been another, right. I think essentially it started with the tackling and up front. They really just looked solid throughout. But I'm always going to go back to time of possession, keeping the defense yep. off the field as much as you can. That's going to help them out the most, I think, at the end of the day. And that's going to be a big key today with this heat today. Definitely. <laughs> keep, keep that offense off the field for a lot and yeah. you'll be set. Well, y'all mentioned keeping the offense off the field. We won the time of possession battle against FAU. It was 33 minutes to 26 minutes, yeah. which UNT has struggled to do all season. And even going into last season, they couldn't win the time mm -hmm. of possession. 
Is this the formula that we need to go to win? Uh, well, for the the, the best season? defense that you can play is not having the opposing offense on exactly. the field. Yeah. So yeah. Jake right. mentioned it two weeks yeah. ago. I mean, I that's, time that's the script that you have to play, especially when you can't win the line of scrimmage, as UNT has sort of been dominated defensively at the line of scrimmage. Mm -hmm. If you can just keep the offense off the field, they can't score points. And, and today in particular, I think this defense is going to come out with a lot more energy. They're coming off a bye week. They're coming mm -hmm. off a great victory, great defensive victory. So I think if, as long as we can keep time of possession somewhere around between 30, 35 minutes, we'll see a lot of the same sort of success that we had last week. Let's keep things rolling and see USA play. Seven straight wins dating back to yeah. last season. They've yes. had a lot of bumps, on, yeah. bumps along the road. Uh, Non-conference play there, but keep, keeping that winning streak alive. Love to see it. Yeah. So we talked about UNT strength this year as the offensive line, the running game. And so we, also, we discussed like a few weeks ago, just among us, we were like, why doesn't UNT try to play the time possession, like try to keep the opposing offense off the field? Why do we keep going hurry up? Yeah. It it's, it's doesn't fit our scheme this year. It doesn't fit our players. And so we played to our strengths. So what we did was we still did that up-tempo early in the game. We got to a good lead. Mm -hmm. And then in the second half, we played it with a slower tempo. We realized FAU can't stop a run game. And what do we do? We had an eight-minute drive in the fourth quarter that really sealed the deal. Yeah. Because there's always that backdoor covers, uh, garbage time points you have to be aware of, and FAU had one of those garbage time touchdowns. But we did a tremendous job getting off to a good lead and then playing to our strength and playing like hogging the clock in that second half. That's what I wanted to see a few weeks ago. Maybe we've learned. I hope we have because we have a really good offensive line. Like last year, according to Pro Football Focus, it graded out as a top 20 offensive line. We only allowed 15 sacks last year. Mm -hmm. So play to your strengths, and we did that. That's Absolutely. what I want to see. And the best part I think about it was, we only had to see Austin Ani throw the ball 20 times. Exactly. Yes. Yep. And it was the highest completion percentage all year. Mm -hmm. yep. I think that really helped out the team in total. I mean. Yeah, I, I have mixed opinions on the hurry up offense because on mm -hmm. one hand, if, if you can do it successfully, you keep the opposing defense on the field tired, maybe even catch them in some substitutions and, and get some penalties there. But UNT has not been effective with the hurry right. up. And, and you mentioned them making that adjustment in the second half and then, you know, sort of slowing it down a little bit with the heat today. I could see them going hurry up in that first half, try to get the the uh, La Tech defense tired. But I mean, if they, if they just keep not having good play calls when they're going hurry up and just sort of rushing right. themselves. And that's, you know, what's what's going wrong. If you there. really want to scrutinize things. Justin was just talking about hurry up offenses and having your defense on the field a lot because of that, because you're not playing the time possession game. Tennessee right now is by far the, the most hurry up tempo in the country. They're, they're number one in the country and it's not even close. They average like nine, 10 seconds between plays. That's crazy. That's even faster than UCF mm -hmm. a, few, a few years ago. And if you look at Tennessee's defense, they're giving up specifically a lot of pass yards per game. Mm -hmm. Let me mold that over and think about why that's the case. It's because right. the defense is on the field a lot. So good point, Justin. And I just don't think yeah. UNT's pass game is good enough to go consistently right. hurry up. So yeah, I'm, I'm happy with them taking it slow today with this, you know, with the weather conditions and, and everything else that's the, going on. The hurry up to then run the football is not really, right. it doesn't exactly. make a lot of sense. But we'll see if that changes today. I'm not really sure. Well, I mean, y'all mentioned, uh, y'all touched on Austin Ani really quick. So. He obviously he only threw for he was 14 for 20, 180 mm -hmm. yards, nine average nine yards a, a pop, three touchdowns in the one pick six. Very much like a Cooper Rush s mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. game. A little bit. Is this is what grade would y'all give Austin Ani right now? And is this what we need to do in the future in order to get these wins out? Connor, I'm gonna start with you. Okay, I'll, I'll start with a, I'll give him a B minus because mm -hmm. if you limit the turnover, then I think it's a B plus because we're doing what you ask. And obviously, if you play like a like a 18 to 20, 220 yards, one touchdown or two touchdowns, no interceptions, that's like an A+. Plus. But I'll give him a B-. minus. If he can limit the turnovers moving forward, then I'll, I'll move that grade up to an A. But for right now, let's, I'll, I'll keep it like an 82. Okay. okay. I think any time that he's, he's throwing under 25 passes, that means the run game is probably having success. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the recipe for success right there is get the run game going and, and limit Austin's, Austin Allen's throws. I, I think I'm going to give it actually a B plus, maybe somewhere around 86, 87, because – Although he only threw 20 passes, he completed 14 of them. And mm. I think that's really what we need because UNT does not want him throwing the ball too much. So as long as his completion rate stays pretty decent, doesn't have so many interceptions, he had two touchdowns too, 77 Q QBR, 
I'm giving him a B plus, I think, and I think it could be even better today. And yeah. he's forming a pretty good duo with Rod receiver uh, Roderick Burns as Absolutely. well. He's Roderick Burns has recorded a, a, at least one reception in 22 straight games, which is leading this team, and he's leading the team this year with 402 receiving yards. He's really their down play, uh, down downfield big play kind of guy. So look for him to to go off today too. And how about Jair Shorter? Every time That's they caught the ball, three <laughs> yeah. receptions, touchdown maker. three touchdowns. Yeah. So I mean, obviously, if you want a successful offense, that's what you need to do. On the first half, uh, too. You know, and I want to talk about our run game a little bit. I mean, we had Ragsdale going for 119 mm -hmm. yards in the touchdown. We had Attaway going for 71. And we have an A.O. Adeki averaging 12.5 yards a carry. Wow. I mean, wh who, what was the, who was the MVP of this game? Obviously, shout out to Patrick Hobbs, our running back coach. Sure. I mean, how about the yeah. offensive line? Like, uh, all, all, sure. you've seen in the NFL now the narrative is two running backs or three running backs is really how you have to run your backfield. And I love that UNT is taking that approach because you have three really good running backs, four returning starters on the offensive line. That is the key to this team, especially when you when you can substitute all three of those guys in there, get Austin Ani and Stone Earl even yes. involved with the run game. That's yes. that's exactly what I love to see from this offense. You remember when Minnesota starting running back Mo Ibrahim went out last season with an mm. injury, and they had like four other running backs all all averaged like five yards per carry. It's because they had the best offensive line last year in the Big Ten. It's no secret to what really makes a successful running uh, game when you go down the depth chart. So it's really impressive. Give credit to the running backs, but also to the offensive line. And I want to see them continue to be creative with these run these run plays. We saw last week, obviously, as you mentioned, them finally, finally switching up some of the play calling yes. and getting creative mm -hmm. with those with those run games, going play action sometimes. So that's what I want to continue to see out of this offense. Give me, give me Phil Bennett as the player Phil of the Bennett, game on the sideline. Is the old All right. little yellow shirt. I love the mixing the play call. I think that was actually the most important part of the game is deviating from just doing the same, mm. same sort of situation every time. On offense and defense, they offense finally got defense. creative. Let's keep that we'll rolling today. To fill Do we have we'll the best the linebacking core in the conference? I, I mean, think so. No. I mean, Katie, Katie Davis, Davis coming Katie back this Larry season was yeah. huge. If you remember, I think it was like a week before the season, he went to the transfer yeah, portal, yeah. didn't get any offers, and he's like, okay, I'll come back to UNT. Right. But, you know, just went into the transfer portal late. We were lucky to retain you him know, this year. especially keeping – players and retaining them. Obviously, the Murphy Twins are doing their thing. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome so, to the yeah. NIL yeah. era of college football. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, this, this is a great sign for uh, KD Davis and the UNT defense coming back. When we come back, we are going to talk and we're going to go around the state and talk about a little bit of Texas football. Please stay with us. Your zip code. Just one number different and you might have a whole other life. Different school, different job, different dreams, different problems. In America, the zip code you're born in can determine your future. The Y works to change that with programs and services that help everyone thrive, no matter who you are or where you're from. For a better us, support your local Y today. If I could go back and change it all, I would. I, would. I think I'm going to miss you the most. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Or maybe it's just a little moment. I could go back and change, go back and change it all. I could go back. I would. But I can't. What does it look like when a life is truly changed? I feel a sense of accomplishment because I built a house. This house has brought us financial independence. Yeah, that's his daughter. Every family dreams to have their own house. This house changed our lives. <laughs> Habitat for Humanity is at work in your community and around the world. Through Shelter, we empower. back to me in Green Game Day. We're going to take a look around the greatest state for football that there is being Texas football. Three teams playing last night. Obviously, UTSA getting the win against Navy. Uh, it was SMU, 
getting the win against uh, what was it? Hold SMU on. over S SMU. SMU. Uh, I'm sorry, yes, SMU over Navy, UTSA yes. over FIU, mm -hmm. and Baylor getting a loss against West Virginia, Ooh. 40 to 43. Guys, I mean, let, let's talk about UTSA. Obviously, within the conference, how did they look last night? I'm a little worried for our game against UTSA yeah. next week. That's all I have yeah. to say. They went into FIU last night. Very difficult circumstances. I heard the weather was awful there. Yeah, Put up 30 points, being, what, 30 to 10? UTSA is such a force to be reckoned with, especially in the long term. I think this year uh, they have with two losses against uh, Houston and Texas. And Texas right. Yeah. Two big games, two big opponents. But they are still a force to be reckoned with within Conference USA. They're, I think they are the favorites to win it. Still. Yeah, definitely the team to beat. I mean, Jeff Trailer, the head coach, is building this team into a dynasty, and it just makes sense that they're going to make the move to the American next you know, season because they've been recruiting at you know, an insane level. They have, an Al they have the Alamo Dome, obviously one of the yes. greatest stadiums in, in college football. I mean, Franco Harris has just been insane his, his entire career. They're over 2,300 yards already this season. You know, Sincere McCormick was – a big part of that offense last year, the running back, he graduates, but this offense has not lost its stride at all. Zagari Franklin's just going off in the receiving <laughs> yeah, core. So yeah. this is, I mean, they've had three straight weeks of impressive wins over Middle Tennessee, uh, Western Kentucky, which is also another good team in, in uh, Conference USA, and then FIU. This is, this is going to be a tough game for UNT on the road next week. UTSA has like three of the best seven receivers in the conference, which is just yeah. nuts. Yes. Uh, th their defense isn't quite as good as last year, so it's not mm -hmm. like they have like that one-two punch where it's like, we got an incredible offense and an incredible defense. Good luck beating us. No, they're, they're, the defense isn't quite as good. Uh, last, last week they played against Western Kentucky, a one-dimensional offense. Really good mm -hmm. offense for Western Kentucky, but UTSA defense really couldn't put that game away. That's why UTSA had to go for that fourth down late in the game to try to keep the yeah. defense off the field. And last year they would have said, hey, try to go the length of the field because they're around midfield with that fourth down. They would have punted the ball, or they may have gone for it last year. But point being, UTSA is not as complete of a team as last year, but yeah. they're still a really, really good team. Uh, I don't really know the long term because – we're in the era where if you have a really good coach at a group mm -hmm. of five level, he's going to move up to he's going to move up the coaching chain, so to speak. And uh, so again, I'm not really sure what UTSA's long term is, but obviously for this year, they're a force to be reckoned with, like Jake said. For sure, yeah. And not to mention they're three and zero in Conference USA this year, yeah. with beating two of the real problems. I think Middle Tennessee and West Kentucky, although Middle Tennessee is zero and two in conference now, mm -hmm. but they beat Miami. They, yeah. I mean, those are, they are really all the two impressive <laughs> wins. So they. They've got a pretty easy path going forward. You know, you want to talk about impressive wins. How about the Rice Owls upsetting <laughs> UAB? I tell yeah, you that's, what, I that's mean, crazy. Is, that, is, is Rice going to be a team that we have to look out for in the future, the last game of the season? Uh, Justin, I want to start. Well, with you. you know, with how the schedule plays yeah. out, Rice could be five and six in that last game. UNT could also be five and six. Yeah. So that last game of the season yes. could be for bowl eligibility yeah. on both sides. I am all here for a Rice UNT <laughs> meaningful. <laughs> Uh, week week thirteen game I guess it would be apogee. at that point at Apogee. Let's go. For those of you who like follow college football pages and are all over social media for college football, Rice is close. For those of you who understand that, you know where I'm going with that. Rice is four and one against the spread this year, which is absolutely insane. I don't remember the last time that Vegas has undervalued Rice like this. Mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of an interesting note moving forward because you know with Conference USA this year, there's no great team. UTSA is the best team. But everybody else is, well, you got Western, Middle Tennessee's high variance. Uh, but a lot of the teams are just kind of like floating around that three to six win mark. Mm -hmm. And then there's Rice, who, like Justin said, they might reach bowl eligibility this year, which is right. absolutely crazy when they you think about it. They, they've got restrictions like hardly anybody does in the country. They, you know, they got, there's a certain GPA you have to have to attend right. Rice. It's really hard to recruit. And yeah. then you, on top of that, we're in the NIL era and the transfer portal era and you're Rice, and you're in the Houston area with Houston and SMU now recruiting like crazy with, N with the NIL era. What Rice is accomplishing this year is very underrated. Mm -hmm. All right, well, I mean, uh, you talk, you're hitting it on SMU. I mean, SMU, they snapped a three-game losing streak. I mean, they were, they were in the doghouse for a little bit. They I mean, they, they finally pulled out a win against Navy. I mean, how is SMU? I mean, after they beat us, it just seems like they haven't been mm -hmm. that, have that impressive of a year. I mean, Jake, I'm going to start with you. It, What's going on? It seems like they kind of don't have their foot on the gas. They're, the three wins this year are against North Texas, Mean Green, Lamar, and Navy. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so they've just not looked impressive. They lost 41 to 19 mm. to UCF. I mean, this team just doesn't really look the same as they did against UNT. Now, UNT makes uh, decent teams look incredible, <laughs> right, let's right. be real. Um, but they've just not... 
and they, they didn't beat Navy as handily as they should mm. have. They didn't cover the spreads. They, they, don't look to s they don't look like they have the same mojo that they had opening season. So disrespectful of them to beat one of the service academies. <laughs> we should not be able to do that. We saw, the, obviously, the clip of the horse going viral oh, yeah. across the field. I know Connor wanted to hit on that, but yeah, crazy game last night. Yeah, it was a crazy game. Everything happened in the whole nine yards. Yeah. What, 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 yeah. 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 It was a high-scoring game. I'm not really sure about SMU's defense, but we kind of figured the defense yeah. wouldn't be terrific this year. Mm -hmm. But what about SMU's receiving core the last few years? Is this like the wide receiver U of the group of oh, five? <laughs> Probably, sure. yeah. yeah. I know. You got I, the former Oklahoma quarterback, too, leading I, the way, yeah, Tanner Mordecai. Yeah. So. Yeah, oh, yeah. And then, the, so I know I, I discussed a couple weeks ago on here with like SMU being like the NIL king, the king, because they're going to get a lot of these transfers from the Power Five. They have a lot of money at their school. You know these recruits and these players are going to want to go over there. As soon as we start having some of these current American athletic teams like Cincinnati and UCF and Houston move to the Big 12, I think SMU might be the team to beat in that okay. conference. And, and, and I kind of made that face like, uh, I don't want to say that because I'm a UNT fan, but that's really okay. the honest. En enough of these little guys. <laughs> yeah. Enough of these little, you know what we came here to talk about. We can't talk about Texas and not talk about the Longhorns. And the absolute punishment that they Ooh. dished out on the Oklahoma Sooners. I mean, with Quinn Ewers, Texas looks good. Texas I can't, looks real good. Texas looks really good. I mean, Justin, I want to I wanna I go mean, to you. Their, their quarterback room is set for the future. I mean, you're going to have a couple more years of Quinn Ewers, and then Arch Manning comes in in Arch, 2025. Yeah. So, I mean, you just see Steve Sarkeesian just recruiting at an insane level there. You've got probably the arguably the best running back in the game right mm -hmm. now, B. John Robinson, a great receiving uh, duo of Xavier Worthy, Jordan Winnington. I mean, I think Texas, as long as they don't get too high on that win last week, 49 nothing. I think they could make a run to win the Big 12 this season if, if everything keeps playing out in the Big 12 as we I'll see it. I'll tell you what. I have always had a thing against four and two teams being ranked in the top 25 know, at this yeah. point in the season. And like, they could like easily Utah. lose to Iowa State today, <laughs> right. too. I mean, that is a total right. trap game. But I absolutely think Texas should be in the top 25 right now. I think they are really good. Mm -hmm. And that win against Oklahoma, very impressive, although we kind of found out how bad Oklahoma is, especially yeah, the TCU game. But yeah, go ahead, Connor. Yeah. Uh, the Big 12 is going to be crazy this year. And the good thing for Texas is that they only have four true road games in the Big 12 this year, which is going to be noteworthy because you've got so many even teams mm -hmm. in the Big 12. Schedules are going to dictate a lot of it. Uh, this Texas team, you've got to keep in mind, I know they went 5-7 and seven last year, but they choked a lot, a, a lot in those losses, mm -hmm. had leads, uh, really uh, decisive leads in the fourth quarter of those games. And they were a young team last year in what was the super senior season of college football where everybody has all this experience, and Texas was the younger, one of the younger teams in college football. They bring back a lot. Then you add in the talent with, like, Quinn Ewers, the receiving core. You got a wide-open conference. You got some teams last season who were really experienced in the Big 12 who were younger, especially on defense like Oklahoma State and Baylor, and then now with Texas. This is a sneaky game with Iowa State today, so keep an eye on the Cyclones. Yeah, no, so many good Texas teams that we didn't even get to mention Texas a and But, well, I mean, we got the playoff prediction coming up next week and that next block, so stay with us. Hi. You think you're probably sober? Yeah. But you're thinking about taking the back roads home just in case. Why would you do that? Probably okay isn't okay. Call a cab, a car, or a friend. Good choice. This new mom is struggling to get the skates just right. Now she's holding on for dear life. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of siblings in foster care will take you just as you are. Julie was always a, a voracious reader. She carried two novels on an airplane because she'd read one on a three, four hour ride. And at some point, I began to notice that she would read a page and couldn't remember what she had just read and she'd have to go back and read it again. I don't remember much these days after I read, but less does for me and I love it. If I could go back and change it all, I would. I, would. I think I'm gonna miss you the most. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. So sorry. Maybe it's just a little moment. I could go back and change, it. Go back and change it all. I could go back. I would. But I can't.
would happen if, if I had to pick up the phone, call 911 for one of my family members or one of my neighbors? What would I do if, if no one was on the other end to respond? What if there was no 911? So you can be a part of the solution. Anybody can be a firefighter, male, female, younger, older. We are school teachers. We are leaders in business. It's me, you, anyone that wants to be. There is no typical firefighter. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Me and Green Game Day. We're going to talk a little bit of playoff football. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm your host, Mark Barrett. This is uh, Jake Levine, Justin Ballou, and Connor Hibbett. Guys, I think we all have the same three, top mm -hmm. three. There seems yeah. to be a consensus yeah. this year. Yeah. So. Yeah. Pretty good consensus. We have Georgia, Ohio State, and Alabama. Done maybe in a different randomized mm -hmm. order, but we all have the same top three. I mean, Alabama, they're, they're going up against a tough schedule today. They got Tennessee yeah. away. Mm -hmm. They Love played it. tough against Texas A&M last week. I mean, what, what is y'all's take on on they, they still have Ole Miss, too, later in the season on right. the road. So, I mean, this okay, is the cool. most underwhelming season I've seen from Bama in a long time. They actually surprisingly play a pretty hard schedule than they're, than they're accustomed to playing. Also, obviously, they get Austin P. come on. But <laughs> some tough road games this season. We just got done talking about Texas teams. They should have lost to Texas and Texas A&M, mm -hmm. you know, obviously last week. Texas A&M had a final play from basically the goal line and ran some weird route to the pylon. I mean, you, you even saw Johnny Manziel coming out and yeah. being like, what the heck are you doing mm -hmm. on Hashtag the goal Jimbo line Fisher there? Offense. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Alabama, yeah, definitely underwhelming. And now you got Bryce Young banged up, not going to be 100% today. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I could see this playing out like it did last season. Maybe they drop game to Tennessee, drop to Ole Miss, but then come back, win out, and then beat Georgia to win the SEC, and then both of them would end up in the playoffs. So that's why I have both teams. I, I do think this, this could be the year that we maybe somehow see Alabama slip out of the playoff. I'm all I here for okay. it. Awesome. I'm here okay. for that. So, uh, yeah, I wouldn't so mind. <laughs> I have them in my playoff. I think they're going to make the college football playoff. However, out of the years in the past, mm -hmm. yeah. I think this year might be the most yeah. likely. They have looked a little shaky against mm -hmm. some of those decent teams. So when they go up against Tennessee today, you said Ole Miss later in the year, it's going to be really interesting. If they, can, if they can handle those teams like they're supposed to, like Alabama's built to, then they will be okay. If they can't, I could see another team taking a spot. So from my order of playoff, it'd be the – Ohio State. Yes. Then, yeah, I know Justin would love that. <laughs> then I'll go with Alabama at second. I'm gonna go Clemson third, and then Georgia okay. fourth because I don't think they're gonna have uh, Alabama Georgia play two straight games against each other at the SEC championship, right. and then the semifinal. Plus, they're gonna have another round of Alabama Clemson. So that's why I went with that order. Mm -hmm. And then Ohio State and Georgia, they've been trying to get those two to match up for a long time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this would be a really good season if the numbers or if the if everything turns out how. It most likely will. I think that would be the order of the teams. Unless, of course, Georgia were to trip up in a, a game in the regular season and lose the SEC championship, or Alabama trips up in a, in a, in a game in the regular season and then loses the SEC and championship. And Georgia hasn't looked as impressive either. No. I mean, Georgia, no. I mean, they had a little scare against Kent State. It yeah. sure and did. And then Missouri took them down to the yep. wire. I mean, what's yeah. going on with Georgia? I mean, this is always something you worry about after a team just has a crazy yeah. run and wins the national championship. They get a little bit too high on themselves the mm -hmm. next season. But, I mean, there were so many questions about this defense because they just lost, like, all of their players to the NFL last season. The offense has actually stepped up. I mean, Brock mm -hmm. Bowers may be, like, a top 10 pick in the NFL yeah. draft mm -hmm. at tight end. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, they're running their offense through tight ends and running backs. And I love it. Stetson Bennett's just kind of steering the shit. But, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely Georgia and Bama, not what we're accustomed to seeing from them this the season. The best position group in college, football, in college football, by the way, is the Georgia tight end room. Like, they've got, like, four guys who are all going to mm -hmm. go yes. to the NFL at some point. They're crazy. And, like, the, the third string tight end, if he could uh, work with some of his off-the-field issues, this tight end room would just be off the charts. And it already is, but it would just be that much better. It's just insane how much talent Georgia has. But it's going to be interesting to see how they play this year because everybody, I mean every team, is going to want a piece of Georgia because they're the defending national champion. So it's going to be interesting to see how Georgia plays throughout this and, year. And the team that has actually not had the struggles like Georgia, Alabama have, two of them really to me, Ohio State mm -hmm. and Clemson. Yeah. They have both handily yeah. defeated all their opponents and played exactly how they're supposed to. So 
That's who I've got going in. Keep an eye with Georgia. They also play a really tough. They have a three-game stretch. Tennessee yeah. at Mississippi State and at Kentucky. Three that is really tough. solid teams. I believe they're all ranked right now. So yep. Georgia and Alabama actually playing some tough teams this year. I'm all here for it. Love oh, yeah, it. Before that, by the way, they had to play Florida. It's not like that game matters. Yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, uh, we, we talked about how we all have the same top three. My number four is a pretty surprising one. I think Oklahoma State can mm -hmm. sneak into the playoffs. You know, Spencer Sanders is having a Heisman mm -hmm. candidate type season. Their offense looks amazing. Their defense can be a little shaky at times, obviously. And they have a really big game coming up against TCU today that we'll get into later. But I think Oklahoma State can sneak in at that number four spot. Jake, who's your number four? My number four is going to be Clemson. As I mentioned, they've been really quietly dominant, I think. People love to talk about Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State, all these other teams. But I think Clemson is really fun under the radar. Dabo Sweeney, so experienced in big games in the college football playoff. And I think really they are kind of flying under the radar, even though they're ranked fourth right now, I believe. Yeah, mm. fourth. But they're just not getting talked about enough. So that's what I've got as my number four. I could see them going to the national championship game. The one thing, Mark, I would worry about with Oklahoma State mm. is usually they're a team like Iowa that can't play any offense and just plays really good defense. This year, as you mentioned, it's sort of the opposite. Mm. And the Big 12 this season is wide open, and I love it. But it's also like all these teams are going to beat each yep. other up, and I don't think the Big 12 is going to end up making the college football playoff. Just cause You mentioned the TCU game today. One of those teams is going to lose. They, they play Texas next week. Yep. Could lose there. So Big 12 is going to be really tough. My team, though, USC, guys. I mean, also an, another team yeah. that's been a little bit underwhelming, but Caleb Williams, Lincoln Riley, I think that duo, that quarterback head coach duo is, is going gonna, is gonna to win out, get them to the college football playoff, and you know, ultimately win, win the Pac-12, too, obviously. Their turn, turnover dif differential is plus yeah. 14 this season. Caleb, mm -hmm. Caleb Williams only has one interception to at this wow. point. And they play Utah tonight, so that's going to be a really tough game. But if you survive there, they don't play Oregon. They, they don't play UCLA, so US, or I'm right. sorry, they do, play, they do play UCLA, but they don't play Oregon this season. Mm -hmm. So I think USC could be a sleeper team to make the college Lincoln football Riley. this year. Do Lincoln they could, Riley getting yeah. it done. Do you think USC finishes undefeated? I think even if they go, if they drop today to Utah, which I think mm -hmm. is likely, I think they could still win out, go 11-1 and one and make the Big 12, or make the Pac-12 championship, because like I said, I don't see the Big 12 making it. Uh, Clemson is, you know, I think they're in the conversation, but I would worry about them. I mean, Florida State today, they're only a slight uh, favorite in that game, yeah. which is sort of weird, yeah. but Vegas I just worry about so. with Clemson, because yeah. DJ Uyangale just like isn't, isn't what they expected him to be, and he, ha he, is, he is having a pretty good season this year, but... Clemson, I just worry about him in, in, in clutch situations. So, so, so with with one regular season loss, you think USC can still I, make I it? I think they could because okay. I think the Big 12 right. champion is going to have two losses. You okay. You, you don't think how they lose to Utah today could affect that? Because I mean, you saw right. last you saw last game. year yeah. how Oregon yeah. they absolutely blew the doors off Oregon. Yes, yes. That's, and yeah, that that's that true. defeated any kind of chances that Oregon had. So, I mean, USC, I think they're a really good team. Don't get, I think they ruined what Oklahoma had. <laughs> <All> right. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But, but, I mean, USC, they, they have a tough schedule coming up. They do. Yeah. They yeah. do. And why aren't we talking about UCLA? I'm not making the playoff. Oh, Wait, they are. Oh, not right. the playoff. UCLA not the playoff. has like 10 fans in attendance at all their yeah. games. That's yeah. pathetic. Let, let, me, uh, let me reward that. I'm sorry. Not playoff. But, I mean, UCLA's schedule moving forward is really manageable. It's going to come down to two games for them. Oregon on the road, and then U USC. Mm -hmm. If they win one of those, they don't even have to win both, and they're going to go to a New Year's Six game. Like, this uh -huh. schedule for UCLA yeah. sets up perfectly, and they got a really good quarterback and running back, too. And any chance they win both of those? You could well, sneak them into the playoff. I think you could. If they're it'll depend on Clemson and Georgia. I, if, if they go Bama, undefeated, yeah. if they go undefeated, they make the playoff. It's hard to leave out a yep. Power Five undefeated Absolutely. team. Yep. Now we've seen we've seen some experts having Ohio State and Michigan both in the playoff. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's no. gonna happen because they play each other obviously right. right at the end of the season there, and then the big Big Ten champion will probably end up making yeah, the playoff. Yeah, we, we didn't really dissect Ohio State, yeah. but I mean Ohio State they have a best offense yeah. in the nation. Yeah, I mean CJ Stroud has been balling. Best but, offense yes. since 2019 LSU. I yeah, rest my case. Oh, and you've seen Mayan seen Williams that. take over that running back position from Travion Williams. He's been going off the last few weeks. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Ohio State just has weapons galore. The defense is playing, you know, really well under Jim Knowles this season. So Buckeyes definitely going to be in the conversation. Definitely Real quick, does Ohio State go undefeated? Yes. Go yes. yes. And they're going to go to the national yeah. championship game this Absolutely. year. Absolutely. Yep. I don't know about that, but going undefeated Absolutely. all the way. <laughs> when we come back, we're going to preview the game that y'all been wanting. UNT versus La Tech. Please stay with us. Hey, look, it's those guys. What's good? What's up? What's happening today? Let's go, those pearly whites, man. Yeah. Check it out. Ooh, cute. Uh, 
Are you good to try? I'm fine. Hey, hey, girl, hey, girl, what's up? What's the name? What's good? What's up? How many did you have? I should be fine. You should be? Sir, go and step out of the vehicle for me. Yes, sir. See ya, buddy. Today, Sean's got a hearing. We'll see how it goes. Good luck. So it turns out, buzz driving and drunk driving, they're the same thing, and it costs around $10,000. So not worth it. When I was 10, my mom got deported. We had a difficult time, and I feel that's why I didn't get to finish school. Jessica has been through a lot in her life from early childhood. My husband is really supportive in a way that he pushed me to go back to school. She came in looking to complete her diploma. Uh, she had a family she had to take care of. Anytime she needed help, we provided her help. She realized that we were here for her. She wants to have a career so her kids can look up to her. My graduation, it was something I will never forget. I couldn't explain the emotion I was feeling because people like you and me sometimes may have doubts in yourself, but I feel that everything's possible. Jessica's future is brighter than ever. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Mean Green Game Day. The UNT Mean Green play fellow conference foe Louisiana Tech today at 2.30. Here to set the stage, Justin, you want to start? UNT going for eight straight Conference USA wins. It does not feel that way dating no. back to last year, but... Now this is this is a game. This is a team that UNT has not had any success against really right. uh, since this rivalry started. Seven and thirteen is the all-time record for the Mean Green. One and five under head coach Seth Petrell. Mm -hmm. The last time UNT won against La Tech was 2017 in Ruston. So it's been a minute since they won here at Apogee Stadium over this team. It's a good rivalry. Obviously, we got the basketball rivalry too with these two schools, and it's going to stay alive for just a few more years because they have a home and home schedule next year in Ruston, and then 2028 back here in Denton. So we're going right. to see La Tech a few more times over the next decade. Justin, you mentioned how it just seems that UNT has not had a lot of success with these teams, which begs my first question. Why can't we beat these guys? I mean, <laughs> what is the deal? I mean, Connor, I want to start with you. Well, Why some, can't we beat these some guys? Some teams just have other teams' numbers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're looking for, like, something that you probably wouldn't even figure, like Purdue has beaten Iowa five for the last six years, and that's, you know, you got Iowa, a brand of football, Purdue's like, who's Purdue? And then UNT La Tech. La Tech's beaten us, you know, five of the last six times. I can't explain it because it seems like regardless of the coaching staff, some teams just have other teams' numbers. Uh, obviously, Seth Luttrell has been with, uh, for, with us for a long time now. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't understand it. But maybe it's also like a mental game for yeah. some teams. Like it's a mental block. It's like, oh, these guys just have our number. We're not going to do that great. And you already go in with that mindset. Maybe that could be it. I don't know. With the remaining schedule, this game is so important because you look at their road games remaining. I mean, you got UTSA next week on the road, yeah. UAB, Western Kentucky later in the season. You have to win these final three home games. FIU and Rice come in later to make a bowl, and I think that's realistic expectation for this team is to make a bowl game, win six games, and hopefully win a bowl game this season. So it all starts today. Keep that eight game, or get to eight straight wins in Conference USA. Keep that win streak alive, and finally beat this Bulldogs team. And we match up well. We we, we do. do. We do. And yeah. But. I I think we can finally beat Louisiana Tech today. So here's Jake's favorite part of the show. ESPN gives UNT a 59.3 percent chance to win. I think that's pretty accurate. I think it's going to be a pretty close game. Yeah. I don't think it'll be as big a difference as FAU was. Uh, UNT's favored by six and a half. Now, what do you guys think about this over-under of 68? Well, I mentioned the game time temperature being 91 degrees. Mm -hmm. that's, that's really hot compared to what we've seen so far from this, from this team playing at Apogee, at least. So that could make the game go under. 68's a little bit, okay. little bit high of a total for, for the heat conditions, but okay. UNT can score some points, and if the defense doesn't show up, that could easily be an over. <laughs> I, I yeah. think I'm going to take the over just because the momentum that North Texas has coming off of the way the offense produced last week against FAU. Um, and yeah, I, I think they're just in such a groove right now going into this game. See, I think they set that over under around that number because I think they're in, I think Vegas is anticipating a game where it's like it's in the higher 20s and then looking at the defensive stats for both teams, one of the teams gets a late touchdown and then mm -hmm. the other team has to try to score. And whether or not they score in regulation, if they tie it up, let's say at 34, that's an over under of 68. Or if they were to try to score 
and the other team gets like some kind of defensive touchdown late in the game, that's 41-27. That's also 68. I think that's why Vegas is putting that number around okay. that. So that's a fairly accurate number. I don't really have a strong take on the okay. over or the under. And a pick six on either side could e easily make this game an over, even if the defense is right. play well. Yeah. Uh, Parker McNeil, the Wattsack quarterback, has seven interceptions this season. And so he does give the ball away a lot. They fumble some on offense, too. So the, even if the defense plays well, this game could be very high scoring if, if we get some short field <laughs> offensively. Yeah. And it's safe to say, Asanani loves throwing exactly. the ball to yeah. the yeah. And they love returning it for touchdowns. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's, a, that's a great take, Justin. You know, and he's only throwing for 54%, I think, completion mm, percentage right. on the season. He hasn't he hasn't been very successful. I mean, guys, what what you, you mentioned it earlier, if I, I would actually go with the under, by the way. Because okay. I think I think if UNT wants to win, they have to start with that run game. They have to mm. do the time of possession, eat up the clock. Is that the key to the game today? Justin, I want to start. Yeah, with that. absolutely. That's always the key to the game. Get that run game going. Get your offensive line just pushing up to the second level on all those run plays. And as we mentioned in, in the opening block, be creative with these with these play yeah. calls. Only go hurry up if you're if you're going to hit some pass plays. Don't go hurry up and then shotgun the ball <laughs> or uh, snap it from the shotgun and then run it straight up the middle. Yeah, can't have any of that. So if if they go hurry up, I want to see them pushing the ball downfield. A absolutely. Bit. Time time of possession is always going to be my key to the game. I don't think throughout this whole year I'm going to say a key to the game that is other than time of possession. Because with this team, when they lose time of possession, they almost always lose the game. When they win time of possession, they almost always win the game. So I think it just it helps everyone out if they can win time of possession by even just a few minutes. And the Law Tech offense isn't great, but they're very balanced. They have 178 pass attempts to 146 run attempts this season. So they're, they're able to get the, that back involved that I'll talk about here in a minute, uh, Marquise Crosby, mm -hmm. and they're able to throw the ball. Uh, McNeil has already thrown for 1,100 yards, had a big game last week over UTEP, 266 yards and four touchdown passes. So he's coming in hot. Obviously, UNT is coming in with a little bit of momentum off that bye week and off you know, seven straight conference wins, too. So two teams coming in hot. Let's see how it plays out. La Tech has struggled to run the ball and defend the run this year. Mm -hmm. Justin mentioned they do try to run, but mm -hmm. they've very much struggled. Yeah. Both on offense and defense, La Tech ranks in the 120s in rush offense and rush defense. Uh, if you were to ask me, I think that's a perfect matchup for UNT in this game because our defensive line has been rather questionable and our offensive line is terrific. That is our perfect matchup, and given how La Tech can score the ball, especially through the air, man, this seems one of those games where it's like play in a phone booth, mm. run the ball, yes. do, and if we have any third and fourth and shorts, don't go in the shotgun <laughs> and run a hurry-up <laughs> offense because even though La Tech's defense is not great against the run, that's going to be one of those times where they play situationally and they blitz nine guys, and if you put yourself in the shotgun, you're going to put yourself in a worse position or in a better position to get tackled for loss, which just annoys now, the heck you, out of me. Now, you mentioned the Louisiana Tech run game. This is real interesting. So their leading rusher yeah. has only 323 yards on the season. Mm -hmm. Both Io Day and Oscar Adaway have over 400 yards on the season. <laughs> yeah. So those two guys combined have like almost three times as many yards yeah. as La Tech's leading rusher. Well, let me talk about this La Tech running back. Marquise Crosby, this dude is 5'10", we're all taller than him. He's <laughs> one pound. Uh, I'm not. Okay, maybe not Connor. But take, take the under on my height. Yeah, yeah. As a freshman, he's carried the ball 10 plus times in four out of the five games, averages five and a half yards a carry, which is top 50 in the nation. So as a freshman, he's putting up some pretty good numbers. Again, the run game isn't going to be great, but they're going to look to try to establish the run yeah. game with Crosby. We have three good backs here at UNT. They really only have one. So right. it's, everything's going to go through him offensively. For no them. slides to Connor. Short king. <laughs> yeah. I got you. I didn't realize hey. you were under 5'10". They need to take a shot hey, at There are back. some very famous celebrities who are like 5'5", five, 5'6". Five, five, so, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's know, sneaky in the backfield, though, I'll tell you. Oh, yeah, no, he's, he's definitely elusive. You know, another interesting thing, La Tech has not won away this year at yeah, all. Really? They okay. are 0-3 away. They, they played a brutal schedule, I was about though. to say, yeah. they had non-conference. They, yeah. Them and Kent State this year secured the bag and funded their athletic department with their yeah. non-conference play. The they Durry, went to Missouri. We, yeah, Missouri, Stop. Clemson, and South Alabama yeah. were all road games, and I assume by games, I don't, that South Alabama game. I would assume so. But yeah, I, I assume yeah. it was. So they're, I mean, they're funding their athletic department with these crazy road games. But I mean, that, they're also battle tested having gone to Clemson, you know, Absolutely. and obviously Missouri too. They put 20 points against Clemson. I mean, yeah. that's nothing not to sniff at. Yeah. So yeah. transit of property, we did better at Missouri last year than what Law Tech did against Missouri this year. Absolutely. Yeah. Fair. What, what would a UNT win mean today for the Mean Green? Uh, Jake, I want to go. With I you. think a UNT win today would set them up for bowl eligibility, really. Uh, so pretty much the way the schedule sets up is. It is very unlikely that they'll win a road game for the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. They've got uh, West Kentucky, UTSA, and UAB, not in that order. 
Uh, but if they win the rest of their home games, you've got La Tech, you've got Wright, and, FIU. and you've got FIU yeah, yeah. before Wright. Really just need to win the home games, and today is a great day to start that because I think they will have less of an issue against FIU and Rice for sure. It's going to be really tough to get to six wins if they drop this one. Obviously, yeah, you mentioned absolutely. the leg slate. But how about, the, how about what this game is going to set up if they win against UTSA next week? You'd have two teams atop CUSA at 3-0. Yeah, Who would have right. saw that coming if UNC is exactly. 3-0 in conference play? So, I mean, that's going to be a tough game next week, but that would be a showdown if UNC can win today. Oh, Con- be Connor, awesome. I want to twist the question. What if they lose? What would Ooh. that do for UNC? Um, well, I think it'd be some of the dis- dis- uh, the uh, discussion we had coming into the season. Mm-hmm. Maybe yeah. a little bit of uh, off the field matters with like hot seat talk with mm-hmm. coaches. Absolutely. Right? I don't like to try to get political with that stuff, but that would be in the discussion with others. It would not be me, but <laughs> I'll let other people talk about that because I know the media's got to have content. They'll talk about that. Uh, but yeah, it would be looking like a five-win season, or of course, five at best. Yeah, yeah. five at best, because at then best. It, the Rice game looks even yeah, more difficult. Right, because I mean, Rice no is momentum. again, if they're four and one against the spread. Vegas is undervaluing Rice. At some point, we're going to start realizing, oh my goodness, that Rice game is not looking like a straight-up W anymore. Yeah. I think yeah. FIU is going to be a W, though. I think, yeah, now, I, now I, I think, think we have FIU. Yeah, yeah, but but today is absolutely huge to getting to six yeah. wins. And as I mentioned, those are those are the realistic expectations for this team is to win six games, get to a bowl game. I mean, they're still in CUSA discussions right now to win mm-hmm. conference if they stay undefeated. Yeah. So just win today and set up a showdown yeah. in San Antonio. It, it would set up such a great scene in San Antonio. Both 3-0 yeah. and teams. And UNC would just have so much momentum going mm-hmm. into the two road games. You know, Justin, you talk about it. Is that the ceiling? Is the ceiling of this team winning conference USA? Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I really think it's still out of the question. I hate to be a downer, but, I mean, you have to take care of business in those final road games. Get a bowl win. I, I don't think Seth, Seth the Trail has ever won a bowl game here in this yeah. tenure. Maybe he has, like, one bowl win. Maybe one. Yeah. I think yeah. 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 The, the bowl games have just been atrocious but when they've made it, so I think – if they get to seven and six and with a bowl win, I think that's a pretty successful absolutely, season. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And it doesn't help that our bowl games, like they've come against really difficult teams. Like True. we played Utah State a few years ago when they had Jordan Love and all those guys. Mm-hmm. App State too. Yeah, and yep. Troy, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Troy a couple mm-hmm. of years before that. Mm-hmm. So it's just been really difficult matchups. Obviously, last year wasn't impossible, and we were basically playing at home, so it was an opportunity to win there. That was a little disappointment, but. Uh, yeah, it just hasn't really been that easy with us in the postseason. Now, you, you mentioned that UNC might be out of the question for winning Conference USA. I'll tell you what, as a student and a fan, I'm rooting for UNT to win Conference USA. Well, they can't I do think, it if they win today. They I can. think they absolutely can do it. I think it is very unlikely, <laughs> but we would love to believe in this team, wouldn't we? If they can oh, steal yeah. one game on the road, maybe if yeah. they beat UTSA next if week, we're going right. to be having you know, a different we're conversation. Have a different you know, conversation. We, we talked about it last year when UTSA was coming in ranked. Undefeated. Mm. There's absolutely no way that UNT wins. But Jeez. then again, and they doubled them up. They, but but they, playing yeah. in the Alamo Dome, like with a packed house, is, is a different story than playing in Apogee. But yeah, but you that know, certainly it, would be a huge. It upset. could it could go to the point to where Connor was saying maybe the UNT's just got their number. It just got it could True. be like how little brother. Yeah, it could be the little brother. So I love little brother. I mean, it could be how Kansas State always beats Oklahoma. I mean, mm-hmm. it just could be that mental aspect mm-hmm. of it, to where UNT might have that edge. All right. You know, and. Uh, it, it's it's fun. I mean, if you are if you are the uh, La Tech uh, head coach, uh, Justin, I'm gonna go with you really quick. What are you telling your team today? Win the line of scrimmage. I mean, to beat UNT, yeah. you have to win the line of scrimmage, especially defensively. Stop that run game and make Ani throw the ball for UNT. Get all three backs involved. Pound the ground game and open up that play action game. Uh, when we come back, we're gonna talk a little bit about predictions. We're gonna see how good we do in Vegas. Please stay with us. My mother used to say, "Long time." Today, I'm going to talk to you about physics. Come on in, girls. Let's go. This is the first rocket to get humans to Mars. Really tall. I'm a rocket structural engineer designing and building parts of the rocket. You are the generation that will be stepping foot on Mars. Do I have a group of astronauts on my hands? Yes. You can become a rocket scientist or whatever else you want to be. Prescription drug pricing points to corporate mountains. Freedom of the press is about your right to know. It's about your right to be informed. Today, there are real threats to press freedom. And your right to know about the world around us. We must protect our right to know, no matter what kind of news is important to you. Before it's too late, understand the threats. Protectpressfreedom.org. Your voice, your vote. 
In our democracy, they matter and make our community and our country stronger. So make yours count. Get registered, learn the issues, know the candidates, and vote by or on November 3rd. Visit vote411.org for registration and election information. This message is furnished by the National Association of Broadcasters. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Mean Green Game Day. Next to me, I have the amazing Jake Levine, Justin Ballou, and short King Connor Hibbett, right? Yes, thank you. Uh, we're gonna, and I'm your host, Mark Barrera. We're going to go through a deep dive of the best games going on today and see if we can predict and see how good we do in Vegas. First game up, we have Michigan and Penn State. Personally, guys, I know Penn State. They have not done very successful against top five teams. Mm -hmm. I think they're 1-18 in this century playing top five yes. teams. But regardless, I'm going with Penn State. <laughs> I think they are beating the beating Michigan in the big house. Give me Penn State. Jake? I think it being in the big house actually gives Michigan the advantage. I think Penn State has risen in the rankings a mm. ton, yep. like so rapidly. I think it's too fast. However, Penn State wins this game. Another team in the cultural playoff talk. True. I mean, yes. think about and it. Talk. This Michigan Penn State rivalry, it always seems like the teams kind of beat each other up, and the home team always seems to have just a little bit of an edge. Yep. And you mentioned Penn State cannot beat top five teams mm -hmm. to save their life. The last time they went on the road and beat a top five team was 1994. And they played a lot of top five teams in that span. So, you know, Michigan hasn't really played anyone, so this is kind of a prove it game for them. So at home, I I'm going to go with Michigan. Yeah, Penn State's more battle tested. So it's. It's one of those games where it's like if Penn State wins, in hindsight, it's like, well, of course, I guess that makes sense. But if Michigan wins, it's like, well, why did I ever pick Penn State to win? That's why I'm going to go with Michigan, the home team. Uh, and that's pretty much the biggest reason why I think, uh, I think Michigan's environment is going to be a little bit too difficult for Penn State. Uh, I'll go with the Wolverines, although, uh, although I do think that these are the next best teams after Ohio State in yeah. the Big Ten right now. Mm -hmm. You know, for all the mentions that y'all said, this is the reason I'm picking Penn State. Michigan has not looked good against any team that they've played Their non-conference schedule yeah. is Hawaii, yeah. Colorado, yeah. Colorado State, and UConn. Which so, is I mean, those are three of the yeah. worst teams in the NBA. Which is the only reason I'm picking Penn State. But yeah. next up, I we have that. a really big, big 12 matchup with Love TCU versus Oklahoma State. I had Oklahoma State getting my playoff. I'm going to go with Spencer Sanders. I'm going to go with the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Jake, who are you going with? I'm going to go with TCU. I think TCU is so sick. Like – they manhandled Oklahoma. I mm. mean, just Oklahoma never had a chance in that game. No. They looked so dominant, especially in the first half. And I'm going to keep saying this because I think it's true. If TCU wins this game, another college football playoff dark horse. I don't know yeah, about no, that. No. I mean, another one you can throw into the isn't, mix. Isn't it least. crazy looking back that the Oklahoma State and TCU are on top of the Big 12 right now after mm -hmm. how last season yeah. went? I mean, Sonny Dykes is doing an incredible job at TCU in, in year one. Obviously, we saw them win against America's team last week, Kansas, yeah. albeit with Jason Bean, former UNT quarterback, last week. I just think Max Duggan and everything with TCU is going well right now. They're at home. Oklahoma State, you know, gets Texas next week, so that's a big game. Give me TCU to get a big win here. Remember how last year there was a lot of defense in the Big 12? Mm -hmm. But this year it's back to offense. <laughs> this is going to be one of those like 41 to 38 kind of games. I'm going to go with another home team here. I'm going to mm -hmm. go with the Horn Frogs. Last time I was on the show, I predicted Oklahoma to beat TCU. We all predicted that. Obviously, in hindsight, it's like, why did we ever predict that? I'm going to go with the Horn Frogs, and this time I'm going to say it. The Horn Frogs are going to be jumping around. Sorry. Okay. I haven't had too many Got to get, okay. get that right. fun in well, there. It's number two. Yeah. Yeah. Next game. It's an absolute huge Love SEC it. battle. I think it's the this biggest game. Awesome. I think it's the biggest game that there is today. We have Alabama versus Tennessee mm -hmm. yep. in Tennessee. Yeah. I think I, I mean I, Tennessee has not beat Alabama since Nick Saban has been at the helm. Yes. So therefore, I'm gonna go with Alabama. But Jake, do, who do you who do you got? So about not being Nick Saban, they are 0 in 15 against Nick Saban when he's been at Alabama. So, but. I'm going with Tennessee because I think Neyland Stadium is going to be rocking. That place is going to be electric, and I think Tennessee can live up to the hype. I think they've got a great passing game, and just they are so good all around. And finally, all of their athletics are coming together. The last time Tennessee beat Alabama was 2006. So, I mean, they played <laughs> 15 games. Obviously, Bama's just killed this rivalry, but... You mentioned this earlier with Bama. If there was a year for them to go down to Tennessee, yes. I think this is it. Obviously, this you have Hendon Hooker and everything with Tennessee's offense clicking. Josh Heupel's done an incredible job there so far. Rocky Top Knoxville is going to be a really tough environment yeah. today. Neyland Stadium. I mean, Bryce Young isn't 100% going into you know, college game day in that environment. 
Give me Tennessee today to get a huge upset. It's been 15 games and 14 iPhones since Tennessee <laughs> beat Alabama. <laughs> wow. I'm going to go with Alabama. Uh, I know Bryce Young's not healthy, <laughs> but I just think this Alabama defense is going to be the real, uh, the real uh, reason why Alabama wins this game. Tough environment, obviously. I know Bama doesn't play as well on the road, but until Tennessee actually beats Alabama, and they, they're going to have to prove it to me that they can, and that until I'm like, okay, Tennessee's good enough to beat them. Until they prove it to me, Alabama. And if Tennessee wins today, they're going to be in the top four in their in the yes. next day people. So. Absolutely. Let me play Huge off. game for them. Yeah. And then you're going to hear people talk about three SEC teams in the playoff because then there's Georgia I mean, and Tennessee happen. and it Alabama. Yep. A little Alabama bit of little out. round robin of them beating each other. Yeah. You know, we're going to head out west now with a huge game for USC. They're taking on Utah. I'm going to go with the Utes. It seems like Utah just beats down when it just beats these top teams yeah. when it comes to upsetting, especially at Utah. So give me the Utah Utes. Jake? You know, I've always thought that Utah <laughs> was kind of a fraudulent top you know, 15 team or whatever mm -hmm. they usually are. And they're 4-2 right now. I don't think 4-2 should be as high as they're ranked. I think they're always overranked. I'm going to go with USC. I'm going to take uh, Justin's little college football playoff team. Let's go. <laughs> I, I think Lincoln Riley and team are going to get it done today. Yeah, Utah is always dangerous, especially at home. That environment's always, you know, rocking. You mentioned two losses already now for Utah, yeah. so they're coming in a little bit desperate. So this is if, – if, if USC drops a game this season, I would not be surprised if, if it's this game. But I mentioned earlier with USC, the stakes are at an all-time high for this game because if they win, they can run the table and easily be in that college football playoff. So I'm going to go with USC, but this is going to be a tough one tonight. So I think this is one of those games where USC is going to be tested, especially on the line of scrimmage, and I know that's where Utah prides itself on. Oregon State, the only legitimate team, really, that USC has played this year. They played them on the road, and Oregon State doesn't really have the playmakers that Utah does, and Oregon State challenged them up front. And the real, the real reason why USC won that game was because of turnovers. And no offense to Oregon State, they just have not been that great this year in terms of the turnover uh, battle. Utah has. I'm going to go with Utah at home. I think this is one of those games where USC doesn't win by five in the turnover margin, and it doesn't expose them. It's just that USC, I think, is a little bit eye candy right now. I don't think USC is a playoff team. Really good team. They can still go to a New Year's Six, but I think this is one of those games where it's like, oh, we rode off Utah too fast. Mm -hmm. Do you have any? Uh, do you have a score prediction? Because I think this is going to go down to the wire. Oh yes, it will. Yeah, I yeah. think. Thirty-eight, thirty-five. Thirty-eight, thirty-five. Same thing. Twenty-seven, twenty-four. Utah. I was thinking. I was thinking thirty-one, twenty-eight. Utah. 34, yeah. 31, I, th 31. I think it's it's definitely going to be a Very really changeable. close game. Yeah. And our next game, we got another SEC battle. We have Mississippi State mm -hmm. and Kentucky. Obviously, Kentucky is pretty banged up right now. So yeah. I mean, it's going to be a tough environment for them to win. Give me Mississippi State simply because of that fact. And, you know, they've been playing very well. Uh, Jake, who do you got? Yeah, I think this is going to be a pretty quick one. I'm also going to Mississippi State. I think Kentucky, once again, just like Utah, is always overrated. They lost to South Carolina last week. They only put up, what, 14 points? Something like that, yeah. I mean, that is just not impressive at all. I think they're going to get manhandled. Yeah, Mississippi State, I think, is maybe the most underrated team in the entire nation this season. Their mm -hmm. ranking really doesn't, yeah. you know, justify, or mm -hmm. their play doesn't really justify their ranking at this point. Will Levis may be out. Top two receiver for, for Kentucky out. I mean, that's going to be tough to get a win, so I'll take the Bulldogs. Will Levis is actually going to play. They came out with that news, like, earlier this morning. <laughs> Uh, Good luck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. With or without Will Levis, Mississippi State is going to win this game, I think. Look, we said a couple weeks ago on the show that Kentucky and Ole Miss, at least, at least I said Ole Miss, but we all agreed that Kentucky wasn't as good as their ranking, and I think that's starting to show now, and I think you're going to see that with Ole Miss here in a, in a couple of uh, – a few weeks because their schedule because the schedule gets difficult. I'll go with Mississippi State in this game. All right, you know, and the game we have been waiting for, the UNT Mean Green versus the LA Tech Bulldogs. Give me the UNT Mean Green. I think they finally pull it out against the LA Tech. I think they get a dub today, which sets them up for bowl for bowl potential. Jake, who do you have? I gotta agree. Give me the University of North Texas Mean Green, baby, because I think they can go a three zero in conference play. Let's I think go. they can compete in the conference. And I think if they use the same sort of game plan, mix it up a little bit, just like they did last week, they'll come out with another win. Well, while you guys are all watching Tennessee, Alabama, I'm going to be going crazy at this UNT <laughs> football yeah. game. I think, I think UNT can get it done. I mean, they haven't played well against La Tech. But if you can establish that run game, get Austin Alney, again, under 25 passes, yep. I think we'll be set. That's the key to the game. So give me UNT. Eight conference victories in a row for the Mean Green. I'm going to go with UNT in this game. They're at That's home. Amazing. And if you were to look at some of these games, like if – 
if, if you're just like looking straight up, it's like you're going to pick some of these teams and you're realizing, oh, I have too many road teams. That's why I'm going with more home teams this time than I did mm -hmm. last time. I'm going to go with the main green. Yeah, Mark, it. you took a lot of road teams over there. I did take a lot Be of road teams. Now that I think about it, I mean, you know, I think sometimes a road team can bond together when it comes to that. When they travel together, they <laughs> can bond true. together that's as well. True. I mean, that's, that's what I came from. Yeah, that's what I came from when I played football. I mean, we bonded together pretty well. But we look back in hindsight, there were like 15 teams on the road who won, and you predicted se several of them. We'll yeah, see. so we'll, we, we, we will see if that happens. You know, what what would y'all say is the best game to look out for? Do y'all think it's Alabama Tennessee? No question. Yeah, it's got to be. But it's I think I think TCU Oklahoma State could turn into the best game of the, the day when we look back on it. But right now, Tennessee Bama. Hawaii yeah. Nevada. Come on. Oh my God. <laughs> of course. Thank y'all so much for staying with us. Uh, hopefully, UNT pull out a win today. Thank y'all so much.